How you feeling? It's Riggs, and I wanted to show you how you can create your own labels when you're making your own Nintendo games. I've had a lot of requests about this, and I'm a little embarrassed. I don't really have a rhyme or reason on how I make any of my labels. I just make something that looks cool enough for me and go from there. But what I did once upon a time was create this template. This is just your basic Nintendo template. It's this long, this skinny. I can show you the stats here, not that it matters. Uh, this is looking at 2.187 wide by 3.835 inches tall. Now, is that the exact proportionate of a Nintendo label? No, not exactly, but that's the size that works for me. Um, it's the size I take it through when I put it through my die cutter, and it works fine if you're just using a pair of dollar store scissors, which I've used on more than one occasion. Um, in fact, part of this, you can see the layers on the side here, um, I even include the uh, sticker curves so if you're using the there's a natural curvature you can um, add or remove those too um, if you're using a pair of scissors you can do the roll of the curve when you're cutting them um, or if you use a pair of infant uh, nail clippers it kind of creates the same not perfect but again uh, it just if that's what you're working with that's totally fine too so this is kind of like my basic template that i start with Put your, the name of your game there, put it up here too. This bar here um, is your fold line. So anything up here is going to be on the top part of the label. And then this, of course, is facing. I usually just put an image uh, back there. I also created a couple of other templates too on the same uh, file. There's also the one that I use for Capcom games. If I'm going to make, I don't know, um, like, man, I would love to see, like, The Adventures of Gummy Bears. You know, put something like that on there. And then you can't really see it from the screen, but then one more down is I created a Konami one as well. And as you can see, this text kind of goes away, too. So I'll have it in white and in black, whatever you're thinking. And then, although this one is here for the Nintendo label, I also made my own label, um, which is right there. Ta-da! And that's usually what I put on the games that I make, especially the on like hacks and repros and stuff, because if it's a hack... Nintendo did not license the hack, so it shouldn't have a Nintendo seal of approval if it's a hack, because Nintendo didn't approve it, you know, so I, I'll do that for myself, too, and it's all my own little finishing touch to it, anyway. Um, but here's a quick step guide through, I'll remember that Konami in the background, on if I was going to make my own label for, let's say, um, the Goonies. The Goonies came out in Japan, came out in America only on a Player's Choice 10, not on a cartridge, but I want to put the Goonies, the first one, onto our cartridge, and now, now the Coonies is a Konami game, so you can use the Konami thing, or you can don't, you don't have to use any of these, and just put a movie poster in the background, um, or you could, I guess, technically search, uh, like, fan art sites like DeviantArt, the thing is, though, make, check to make sure that the Deviant artist is allowing you to put it on a cartridge, like, cause a lot of times it'll say, um, like, yeah, you know, use this uh, free to use, you know, just give me credit. So you use that, then give them credit. But if it says don't, then don't, because that's their work, that's their art. Um, but in this case, I'm just going to, I'll show you what I do here for this. So here's, here's this. And I will, this will be available to uh, in a link uh, in the description below. Um, you can have this template. I'll, uh, up, I'll post the template somewhere so you can download it for yourself. So I'm going to, I already have my emulator open. And I'm just going to do the basic black box screen grab thing. I'm going to push this over here. This is called Jing, J-I-N-G, TechSmith Jing, absolutely free. And it screen caps uh, the action. So I'm going to grab, that's fine. It doesn't really matter. I click that button, and now I can kind of drag and drop the image I want. So let's say that image I want, ah, it wasn't a very good shot here, but I'll just drag it there, let go. Gives you some options. I can either capture the image. I can capture a video. Um, you can't save the video, though. It only saves it as like a video, like a, like a flash file. So um, redo or cancel. So I'm going to capture it. That kind of cuts it out. And then given me the options here, I can either save it. I can save it to a screencast, which means I can save it and send someone the link to download the picture. I'm just going to copy it in this case. And you can save it. Yeah, it's fine. It says auto-hide, but it doesn't take long enough. All right, so that's going to go in the background there. So I already have it. Control-B to paste. There it is. And I want to put it behind the black box. And I'm just going to push this. Control-T to transform. If I hold Shift and drag the corner, it'll keep the size ratio. So no matter where this thing goes here, you know, if I let go of this, it'll kind of 
get squished and whatever. So if I hold shift, it'll keep the aspect ratio here. And that's... Ah. I let go of shift too soon. There we go. Now let go. There we go. So you can maybe do something like that. Not perfect, but it might get the job done. Hit enter. Name your game. Um, this is going to be the Goonies 2. Highlight that. Or, I mean, the, sorry, the Goonies, the first one. Also called the Goonies. Um, this is, you can use any uh, font you want. Lemon Milk is almost my default font for what I use. If you're using for classic black box, I think the one that works best for me is Swan C. It's a free font, uh, defonts.com. I'll post it in the link below, too. Um, this one, I have to highlight it first. Swan C. Uh, except for, you have to use all caps, so caps lock. That one might be closest to what black box games use. Maybe. Possibly. Um, but again, your game, do whatever you want. If you want to use Bleeding Cowboys, which I wouldn't recommend. I mean, you could, I guess. But whatever you're thinking. There you go. Don't forget to change it up there as well. If you want to change the color, go for it. If you want to change stuff and move it around, go for it. This is your game. This is your label. But that's basically how I save mine. When you save it, the aspect ratio or the inches of the of the uh, document here should print out. Um, if you're printing it out like you're cutting it out yourself, you can fit... Um, I'll even show you here. So that's how you do that. And if you want to put on a Capcom box, you know, you could, I guess. Um, not that it's a Capcom game. <laughs> but um, whatever you want to do. Anyway, that's all I do, really. Let's go to um, Open New. And we're going to do the full page U.S. paper, which is the 8.5 by 11. If you're printing it out on a piece of paper, this is your 8.5 by 11. I'm going to open up another. Uh, here's kind of a little sneak preview of a bunch of label I've done in the past. All right, Metal Jesus, don't fail me now. This label was actually designed by my friend Joe Fritz. I can't take credit for this one. But when you're just adding them, you can probably fit, I think, like eight to a page comfortably. Can I add another one? There we go. My computer's running a little slow here. But everyone's computer is always running a little slow. Naturally, yours would be, you know, easier to cut and easier to manage. I'm just putting them on here. You can put six comfortably. If you really want to squeeze as much whatever, you can turn this sideways. Again, I'm holding shift and rotating to, so it'll rotate into a straight line here. You can put one there. You can put one over there, too. And you can print that off. And you can do eight per page if you'd like. Um, but again, that's really all I do. Not a whole lot of science or technique to it, but this template that I that I used, uh, this template here, um, I'll post this for free. It's yours. You can have it. Um, I'll post this in the uh, description below so you can use it for yourself. So if you need a label, uh, should be good to go there. And other places you can, I mean, there's places like the cover, uh, the cover project and whatnot. So if you're looking for a legitimate replacement label for, like in my case, uh, Faria is a game that I have for Nintendo. Love that game. I've never had a label for it. So that's one I do need to make a label for. I might check places like that or even Google images. But again, I would say use deviant art or you can always send a message to the deviant artist too saying, Hey, would it be okay if I put this on a cartridge? And they might say, yeah, it's cool. You know, it's, send me one too when you're done. Um, you can certainly look into that. I would certainly not recommend doing it without their permission and then absolutely selling it, making a profit off of their work. Um, unless you give them a little kickback or something like that. But that's all, that's me. That's all, that's my philosophy, you know, independent artists and all that. So, uh, have fun with the labels and all that and enjoy. If you have any questions, uh, be sure to hit me up. And that is how I make my own labels. Oh, you did have a question or people have had a question about, um, how I cut my labels. I use a silhouette portrait. I've done a video a long time ago on what it looks like when it's in use. And I will do a video maybe later on. Um, if you would like to see it, it's really just a die cutter, um, like a cricket or something like that. And I can do a video on that too, but it's not, not really, not really all that great, but I'll post a link to an earlier video I did as well, uh, in the card there that shows you how that works too. So until next time, have fun. We'll see ya. And happy making label making. <laughs> Take care.